Here. Hey, how's it going guys? Domino Paris 21 here and back with a guest deck profile for you all. So I have my buddy here, Mr. Nukes, is what he likes to call himself. Say what's up to the camera. Hello. He's a little shy. Um, but yes, uh, if you guys actually do pay attention to the ARG Circuit Series, he actually was the ARG Richmond Champion for 2016, beating me in top four, because I was playing Thavis. And uh, you were playing Ripples? Yes. Ripples with two Odysseus. Um, but of course, uh, for this deck profile, we're actually we we're going to be showcasing what? Blue Waves. Blue Waves, not Ripples, because I think we've all seen the same Ripple deck. But we may have showcase that a little bit uh, in the near future. But yes. Blue Waves. Um, so Nukes here, just good. So you guys know a little bit about him. And my, he's been playing in local in our local area for what three, four years, just as long as I have. Um, I started around when set seven, set seven, set eight drops, right, right before the Aqua Force trial deck, basically. Okay, so I have like a full year on you in terms of longevity. But yes, he's been playing. He's like the Aqua Force guy. Gives Mr. Cardfight King the run for his money. Shout outs to him. Um, but yes, uh, so of course with the restriction of ripples, um, what are your thoughts with Blue Waves now? Do you feel that now Blue Waves could easily be the best version of Aqua Force? I mean, you literally have every version of Aqua Force. Uh, so what is your brief opinions on it, especially based on the meta now before we get into your build? Um, with, the, with the meta going on right now, especially with the new Overlord stuff coming out, uh, yeah, I believe that uh, Blue Waves will be eventually a better deck because you could get off the fourth battle just by having one unit on the field, so you at least get your enablers with less units if you're going against control matchups. Yep. But I do feel like that Ripples will still be will still be lingering up there since even though with the two Odysseus limit, they can still put a hurting on people. Yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Um, although Ripples maybe lost slight, but some is slight consistency with the lack of four Odysseus. Um, um, what I like with the blue waves, like you, like you mentioned, you have more ways to enable this fourth battle, which is always required for Aqua Force without as much commitment, which is always important against certain control decks. So I definitely, that's one big thing I love with blue waves, and they have a lot of great late game pushes um, that we're gonna just show you. Uh, we're gonna show you all the plays later down the road. But anyways, let's actually get started, man. Um, for my grade threes, I run th I run three Angry Boils. Three or four? I run four. Nah, four. Yeah, four. Lose count. <laughs> yeah. Then I run three Tetragrams. SP. Shout out to Agent from Team No Guard. He probably doesn't have these. Okay, I'm really bad at this. SP. Anyway. So <laughs> <need> three more. <laughs> <laughs> We're um, working on it. For my for when I'm so when I'm playing this deck, my ideal ride is Anger Boil. Of course. And what Anger Boil does is it's GB2. When he attacks on wave two only, he gets plus five thousand power and choose one of your rear guards, stand it, and gets plus ten thousand power until end of turn. Really, really good. So of course works great in conjunction with some other key cards that uh, enable a reset on themselves, such as I sway those like they have a rear guard out. Attack attack Quavos at the rear guard. Attack for 16, restand, then when he attacks in on wave 3, 21, 21. Really, really strong. So it makes it so that, you know, once you can enable your GB2, you still have uh, nice, good power plays, a pseudo Lambro, as I could say. And that's uh, again, whole. four battles, two units. Really good. So definitely, definitely the ideal card. And then he has a stride break, only for. Uh, only for Tetraboil, which is when Tetraboil when Tetraboil were to stride this, when he attacks on wave two only, choose two of your rear guards, stand them, and get them plus three thousand each. Yep. Uh, and and Tetraboil of course is a restander and and yada yada. But we'll get to him. Um, we'll get to the strides. But yes. Yeah, and I'll explain plays with him with the strides that I like to do. Yep. Um. Now normally I do I run Tetra Drive. Mainly for the blue the blue wave name, so I could use the recent so I could use the recent stride. Correct. But at the same time, if my opponent did want to pull, if my opponent did want to sit at grade two and I get the four damage, all right, down my ideal ride will be touch drive since I can just punish him with formal break with a restanding standing or at grade three. I've seen you do it a few times too. But ideally, I see that you uh, you run seven grade three just because you want to ideally try to open up with him and I guess uh, you just want to make room for other cards. It makes me more room for twos. Yep, more options for it, and you don't. And with that powerful GB two that Anger Boy has, you're not as reliant to stride every single turn like some of their versions of Aqua Force. No, not really. Yeah, so really good. I'll move on to Grade Twos. Best part of the deck, I think. Okay, for my Grade Twos, I run four Fuevas. I run three Tyranite Teamus. I run four Tidal Assaults. Of course. And for the one Tekken that I love, 
One battle siren at a lake. All right, so we're gonna put the alley to the side because I know this is very unorthodox to some people, but we're gonna explain more about that in a bit. So let's just go over these just real quick for people. I'll go over the MVP grade two of my deck. That's card in the deck. This is first off, what I love about it, he does have blue wave in his name, which I'll explain in grade two place. Blue Way, Blue Way Marine General with us. Way 3 only. Rear Guard. Can I blast 1 with this unit attacks? If you have a Blue Way Vanguard, this unit gets plus 2,000 at the end of the battle standing. And when he attacks Vanguard, that is. Attacks Vanguard. So, since he has a Blue Way name, if you go, if you go initiate that third battle at turn 2, he's active since it has a Blue Wave name. Yep. Also, with, uh, also he's great with Lambros, uh, Tetraboil, when he resands, get this plus three, so it, it can attack for 15. And with an extra booster, it'll be at least 25. Lambros target too. So, this is a really, really strong card. And it's early, great for early game as well. So not especially, even. With, especially with my strong lineup, which is stronger too. Speaking of early game cards. I run four title assault. When he attacks a vanguard at the end of the battle, he stands plus 5,000. Not optional, he has to stand. Minus five. Yeah, minus five. Yeah, because it literally states if an awkward vanguard, stand this unit. It doesn't say you may. Yeah, it's <laughs> mandatory, so people gotta remember that. It is but, mandatory. Uh, I think I think we, everyone at home has already know with Title Assault how strong he is. Sounds good. Yeah. Call Sounds him down, good. turn two, hit a critical trigger, give you the Title Assault, attack twice. <laughs> Uh, that's a now, some people ask why I run tonight the Pimos. Uh, his skill is GV, uh, GV1, wave 2 or more. When this unit attack is a vanguard, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire. Okay. I run this since the deck, since the deck main, since, since basically with the deck, I uh, normally has like your vanguard being the second or fifth battle. With this, if, he, if these, in, or these normally are in between it, I have retired power because the deck already has a lot of draw. I just want to have a little bit more pressure where they have to think about what they have to guard and what's more important. Yep, plus it could be pretty nice to go mid game with uh, Lambros as well. So. Yeah, now that. And basically have them try to go off twice. Yeah, so I like it. So now we're gonna talk about real quick your one tech card. So I, I know this is gonna call for the most explanation, even though it's just a one of. But what's the idea with the Adelaide? Um, the reason why I run the tech in the one Adelaide, I can thank um, Leo for that since I just witnessed it at a big tournament I went to. Okay. For a Commander Thavas turn. Since she since it requires you have a, I mean, have a Vanguard with Thavas and his car name, and since we know the rules of the game, when you strike. You have the heart's name and you have the stride's name. So part of the is the Thavas name. Yes. So when you stride, Commander Thavas skill, I use them as my first stride in the deck to enable the GB. Yep. So his skill is, even if I don't have her in hand, it's still an amazing stride. Unflip a copy, choose a unit, give a plus five thousand, and the skill attack from the back row. If you're at GB three, the unit that you chose gets the skill when this unit attacks on the fourth battle. The fourth battle, she's three of your opponent's rear guards. They choose one. And retire Nice. So I love this with the uh, with the Thavis turn because you can just keep her in the back row, keep her safe, then move her up next turn when you're ready for something else. So you cannot blast one, still blast one. She can plus two thousand, and when she attacks a vanguard, she restands. So it can literally 16, 16, or save her till after you attack with the vanguard. Put triggers on her, and she give up the 21, 26. Yeah. So it essentially gives you like 31. Especially on the the stride turns with Thavis, it kind of gives you like a fifth Fuevos. Cause like you can like save the Fuevos for your later pushes and call her down instead. And, and, if, I don't, thing. and if I don't have her, Fuevos in the back row, attack, attack with something else. So attack, attack. Same, it's pretty much practically the same thing, but yeah, that's your one of tech for that reason. And that's always gonna be your first stride. Yeah, it always end up being my first stride. Well, you kind of have no yeah. choice anyway, but well, Yeah, anyways. when I get there. Uh, for... Um, Ones. For ones, I run four G perfect guards. I normally run normal perfect guards in almost all my decks because normals are the only things they don't really like. But I run this because the deck does counter blast sometimes too much depending how much goes on. So basically, they're for insurance. Yep. I run three Battle Sign on Stacia. Love that card. So good. I run three uh, Blue Wave Soldier Bright Shooter. And I run four Kelpie Rider Nikki. Okay. So obviously for Nikki, Stride Enabler, definitely gotta run the four up. Um, so explain Bright Shooter a little bit. This is one reason why I run seven uh, seven grade threes. One, he's not GB GB restricted. 
Well, is uh, only thing that he is required is at the four. Um, if, if, when he boosts and it's the fourth battle or more, if I have a blue wave vanguard, I may hit a cost if I do. I can take a blue wave grade three for my drop zone and add it to hand. Oh, nice. So essentially, you know, discard a grade three for stride fodder. You can pick it right up. Pick it right up and use it as the discard cost for my uh, restanding vanguard. Nice salvage. <laughs> So it's really good. Uh, battle sign Stacia. She's there for back row attacker, fourth enabler, and fun shenanigans during the uh, the uh, tetra boil break uh, strike turn. We'll get to that. And then triggers, right? Yeah, triggers. It should be pretty straightforward. So let's just get it out of the way. Yeah. Oh. Um, I run four blue wave crits, four supersonic sailors, four battle sign Malikas, and four of uh, the best heal trigger. Gotta run sex guns. So of course the heal triggers are obvious. Malika definitely got to run him in Aqua Force. It's just too, too good not to. Supersonic Sailor is pretty straightforward. Why you run it? Um, but explain this. Uh, uh, I love this crit trigger. It, what it does is uh, you uh, on rear guard act. Put this on. Uh, put this at the. Wait. Put it on top. Yeah. Put this unit on top of your deck. Your Vanguard gains a skill when it attacks on the second battle or more. Draw a card. So obviously with a restanding Vanguard. Because there's cards. plays where I just dump four of these in my hand, return them all to the deck, restand, draw four twin drive, draw four twin drive. Nice. And oh yeah, we forgot to actually mention the starter. Where's your starter? Um, he's somewhere up in this thing. Here it is. There we go. <laughs> I might run Sorry, a, blue, a blue way dragon, dagger master great good hit. Have fun writing that down. Deck no. <laughs> so his skill is GB1, Counterblast 1, put this unit into your soul. Then you choose it to one of your vanguards and they gain this skill, auto, weighs two or more. When this unit attacks a vanguard, draw a card, then it gets on wave five, when this unit attacks a vanguard, it gains plus one critical until end of the battle. Very nice, very nice. So adding this on top of the crits, which I see you do countless times, lots, lots of attrition power late in the game. Also gets crits back in the deck. Also, if I get them in my hand, I just keep on recycling them. So it's really good. So like, really, if you can la if your opponent lasts that long to with that big late game push, you use the combination of that starter. You can build a, a lot of attrition uh, uh, at the end of that turn to where you pretty much just won the game just with a, that much advantage you created between you and your opponent. Yeah, there's sometimes where I go on my stride turn and we have like three cards in hand. They end up being one stride and able two crits, call them in, and end up hitting two draws and ending my turn with twelve. Yeah, so it's very powerful. So, of course, speaking of powerful, we're going to talk about one of the best cards in the deck, the Strides. Your Strides um, lineup. For Stride lineup, <laughs> I run, um, as I mentioned, two Command of the Loss. It's always going to be your first Stride, by force, essentially. Yeah. I, run, um, I run four Anger Boil. Two SPs. I mean, uh, yeah, two uh, Tetra Boil. They got to be up front now. Then I run two uh, Lambros. Okay. Which also. It's just one because I'm like this. So, I know with some people, they still like the Lambro. They still like four Lambros just because, in a lot of situations, Lambros can actually force out more cards from your opponent. And at the same time, Lambros could work more better in conjunction with uh, Fuevos, essentially with the combination. But what, is, but what reason do you like with, uh, with Tetra Boil instead? Because I know there's definitely some nice advantages with Tetra Boil. There, uh it actually depends on my matchup, actually. The reason why I prefer two Lambros and four of these is, depending on my matchup, let's just say I'm going against Megan Connie and the uh, heavy rest rest of my field. I get normal straw, I get normal strike anger boil, attack on my second battle, stand two units just to get more attacks on them. Then I'll just do it next turn, get the restand, then if I do it again, I can at least stand two units. Very nice. I have it there for mainly options, but mainly having the restanding vanguard I see more as a threat, because that's more attacks I have to worry about, especially with two drive checks happening and two drive checks again. Mm -hmm. So that's basically four drive checks minus three. Well, I think another thing too, just like you mentioned, especially in control matchups, which is pretty common here in Northern Virginia, because I'm around, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's why I like with Tetra Bowl, because of course, with Lambros, you really want to have the ideal field present to get the maximum potency out of them. But without that, then Tetra Bowl can make the, really make the most of a really limited hand, 
limited field, and he can essentially enable himself at the same time yeah, without having like certain key cards. Because normally, if I'm in a sticky situation, this would be probably my ideal field where to bloody hell is he? No, you did very well in round one. Normally, I like having this for my field setup. So basically, I'll, basically, I'll attack, I'll attack a rear gun just to get it out of the way, an interceptor or a vanguard. Regardless, um, then when this attacks on wave two, this is what I love about it. It stands two. So you know, regardless, I still get the stand two for the stride break. I won't get the stride break if I do it with Lambs. Very true. Very nice. I mean, like one big play as you see here, like especially with the Stasia. This one I, I really love with Stasia in this particular deck. You can simply just like with that lineup you had. So this requires way four more. You don't even have to boost it. You can like attack rear guard, yeah. attack rear guard, stand both of those plus three plus three. This gets plus two, so this will hit twenty one in the center, and this is all. Um, we'll hit twelve. Yeah, twelve. So it's really amazing. So you just go attack, like attack, attack, like. Even attack, restand, attack. I mean, there's a lot of like, obviously, and this is assuming that you don't even have a column here. Yeah, and also then he'll get my grade three back for the stride fodder. That's also, I really didn't actually explain um, what he does, actually, so I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. Um, so, so, so uh, Touch of Oil. What he does is, um, can I lost one? I flip a copy. Then your Vanguard gets twin drive. Then at the end of the battle, at the end of the fourth battle where your rear guard attacked the Vanguard, you may pay it a cost, you do discard one card and stand this unit. Yep. So it has a ch it's probably the cheapest restander in the game. Yeah, I agree. There's a cost of can I lost one, discard one, and all I gotta do is just get four battles, which is easy peasy with the stride break and literally a unit or two. That's really good. Like I said, he has ways to essentially enable himself, make the most out of very limited feel, which can happen for Aqua Force, but when this card gets going, with the, with all the key pieces together, it really does get going, and it swings a ton of momentum in its favor. Um, that's why I personally really like the blue waves, because uh, eventually your opponent has to play, you know, straight up with you. You know, obviously your opponent has you, you and your opponent has to go into your strides, even if there's a great two game, unless you're playing like ripples with a god hand. Um, but yeah, the, uh, yeah, seriously. But the momentum swing that Blue Ways can create for itself late in the game is amazing. It's simply amazing. And Blue Ways are, I think, is the best Aqua Force deck that can really make the best of a bad situation later in the game. I mean, Ripples can too, but you know, that's definitely uh, there's definitely a lot of cases you can make between Blue Ways and uh, and Ripples. But I personally like Blue Ways as the best deck. Um, that's just me personally. But um, but yeah, there you have it, guys. That is the deck right there. Um, any last thoughts or anything for you, Nukes, um, for relief? Not really, except for Business Suit Dragon got a long ass neck. Yeah, he does. He's no. come a long way. Okay. Yeah. His neck got stretched out. <laughs> Alright, guys, well, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And we'll probably get a match in here for you guys as well. Laters.